rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, church. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I just want to share with you this morning, Brother Mister and I were here early this morning, and we had a tremendous time with the Lord. Obviously, he's not living here, but we communicated by phone. And I pray that what we felt this morning would continue in this service today. And I'd like to begin by sharing a word with you. And sometimes during the service, I'd like to have our missionary president come and make an announcement to us because we're going to have a missionary coming here on the 7th of November uh, to minister to us, to let us know what's going on in the church and the mission field. And it's always interesting when missionaries come and they share uh, their experiences of the mission field because they are our eyes and ears as to what's happening on the mission field. And it's always good to know. And we thank God for them. We thank God for them that they leave the comforts and the security of their homes in America and they go on the other side of the world where they have to do without certain things that they used to. But they make sacrifices because they love God and they want to see as many souls born into the kingdom of God as possible. So we thank God for them and look forward to November 7th when our missionary Rob North will visit with us and share his time with us in the morning service. And I would encourage you to invite all your friends and family to come out and to welcome him because somebody coming all the way from Africa, you don't want them to come and see a church that's too empty, do you? If I had to go somewhere to do ministry and I showed up and there was hardly anybody in the church, I would be very discouraged. So let's, let's encourage everyone that we know to come and uh, be a blessing to him that when he goes back to Africa that he will remember Miami Central Church of the Nazarene in a very positive way. Amen, church? Um, one of the traditions of Miami Central has always been good for was how they welcome missionaries and they make welcome people who um, are visiting. So let's continue that tradition so that um, God will use us to be a blessing to He's not just a missionary, but he's a brother. He's a brother of the Lord. So we want to let him leave here and go back to Africa being encouraged because he met a group of people in the church called Miami Central Church of the Nazarene and boy they were on fire for the Lord and they gave him a lot of So at this time we'll pause and we'll share with you a word from the word this morning. And then we have Sister Aileen and Isaiah come and lead us in worship. Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Say to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He's not to be feared, or he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of the nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea be sound. 
and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Let us pray. Father, you said, in everything, give thanks. We are thankful that, Father, we are enjoying this privilege of coming into the house of the Lord today. And we are here, Father, for one reason and one reason only. To exalt and magnify your name because you have been so good to us. You took us through, Lord, a difficult week. It's difficult, dear God, just to be on the highways and byways of our city. But dear God, you shielded and protected us. So we were able to make it to our homes. And for those of us who have a job, dear God, they have a paycheck. For those of us who don't have a job, dear God, we have some other security that, dear God, keeps us. So Lord, we just commit this time to you in thanksgiving and praise. And we pray, Father, that your great and mighty hand that has been so faithful to us, the rock of our salvation, we pray, that dear God, in all things that we do, you will incite our hearts, dear God, to offer up, dear God, sacrifices that are fragrant aroma unto you, so that dear God, in everything that we do in this house today, you will be honored, you will be glorified, you will be exalted, and you will be magnified. And we, as your beloved, will say, Oh, how good and blessed it is to be in the house of the Lord today. In Jesus' name we declare it all. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Let us praise God together in spirit and in truth. Let's stand together as we lift the name on high.
us here tonight. And we want to praise him. Praise him for all the things he has done. Praise him in advance.
each other. We help each other. We pray for each other.
the people who don't acknowledge it because they're too prideful. Even the people who give you a story and says, I don't need God. I do not worry about myself. They need you. Because you see, every breath that they take without you, it's impossible for a man to live. But Father, we're just here to give you the honor and the glory and the praise that you and you alone deserve. We thank you, dear God, for this day. We thank you, dear God, that you allow our footsteps, dear God, to be guided into this house of worship. There's so many people out there on the streets. They don't know you, they don't care about you. They don't even have a place to put their heads. There's a guy up on 7th Avenue. While he's ready, he's got a little umbrella and he's lying down on the sidewalk. He don't know that he needs you, but he does. Because Father God, you look at him with the utmost compassion. And if he would call out to you, Father, you would come to his rescue. And you'd get him off living on the sidewalk begging for quarters and whatever. But oh my God, we thank you for your great salvation because in your great salvation, Father God, there is peace. In your great salvation, Father God, there is love. In your great salvation, Father God, there is joy. In your great salvation, Father God, there is contentment. Because we know, we know the one dear God who is supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory. So, Father, we bless and give honor, we give glory, we give praise to you for all the wonderful blessings you poured upon us. Some we know, some we don't even know. But dear God, we thank you. We thank you that through this difficult time, dear God, in the life of the world, we can put our trust and our confidence in you. To know, Lord my God, that your hand is upon us and that, Lord my God, no come what may, no matter what takes place, Father God, your hand, dear God, is holding us and is guiding us, dear God, is keeping us. Oh, for those of us who have children, it's not easy to raise a kid today with all of the distractions that come against them. Hallelujah. But we are so thankful, Father. In spite of the distractions that come, we are glad that not only your eyes are upon them, but your hands are upon them as well. Father, we thank you for our, our country that we live in, that, dear God, there are so many new freedoms, dear God, that we enjoy in this country. Even though some of us, dear God, take those freedoms for granted and abuse them. But, dear God, we, we, we thank you. We thank you for, for every day that you allow us to wake up in this land. We thank you, dear God, for the leaders of this nation, Father, 
as imperfect though they be, you are the awesome God that delights to use in in fallen men. So, Father, we lift up our president before you. would have a whole lot of criticism to level against him. But oh my God, I thank you that we're not living in Russia. I thank you, Father God, that we're not living in North North Korea. I thank you, Father God, that we're not living in China. We abuse the privileges of free speech. But oh my God, if we live in these nations, dear Heavenly Father, the consequences would be so much different. But dear God, you did say righteousness exalts a nation and sinners are reports to any people. Dear God, our leaders are taking the wrong paths, approving abortions, approving same-sex units because you said same-sex units are an abomination. You said, dear God, about abortions, you said, thou shalt not kill. Yet we hear people say that my body is mine to do what I choose to do with it. But that's not true. No woman in all of creation ever created herself. No woman in all of creation has ever decided what shade of color she'd be. No woman, of, no woman in all of creation, dear God, has decided whether she was going to be tall or short, whether she was going to have lots of hair or no hair. None of us had a right to decide what we're going to become because there's only one creator. And Father, you have decreed that there are certain boundaries that we should not cross. But we thank you, dear God, that in spite of the fact that you disapprove of what we do, you still show restraint. But I pray, dear God, that the day will come when you cause men to look at themselves as you see them and cause men to repent of the evil of our doings. So once again, dear God, you can bless the land. You can cause your favor to flow upon the land. You can speak to COVID-19 and you can tell COVID-19 to cease Yeah. 
something and vision that has been mightily blessed by you. But it's chose to be I'm grateful for the blessings that God that you have bestowed upon it. America is great because you made it so. Not because it made ourselves, not because science made it so, but because you chose to bless it. So Father, I pray that you bring this nation there, God, to come to a time of repentance and humble itself before you. That one day we can say, America could say, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Father, oh, even though we are few in number, it's a joy to be in your house because we're not here by enough accident, chance, or coincidence, but we're here by the right appointment because there's something that you needed to hear. We needed us to hear. There's something that God that you're working in our hearts that if we didn't come here today, we would not be the same as when we walk out of this place. Oh my. We thank you for this house. We thank you for your plans that you have for this house, dear God. The doors of this house would have been closed a long time you choose to extend this life because that God, your plan for this house exceeds what we can think of imagine. Oh, so, oh my God, we see a few people in here today, but we have the confidence in them. It won't always be like this. You see, some of us have to mature. And some of us don't mature because we have a whole church full of people. Some of us mature because when the going gets rough, we stick with you. So that when the time comes, there, God, that you bring much fruit into this house, we mature enough in God to show the love of Christ to you. Lord, remember those who used to be here. For whatever reason, they're not here today, but thank God, we just pray that your hand of love would be extended to them, that they God and understand their Father, that there's a place here for them as well too. Because thank God, we says, Father, that we go to the world living once so that the world may know. And what this community needs, thank God, is a church, thank God, that is functioning in unity. Because, Father, all around us, there are lost souls who need to come to repentance. Because you said, all souls are yours, and you take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And so, Father God, this house is here. As a loving house, Father, many around us, that God, that are walking in darkness and they need to see the light, that God, that is shining to us. So that God they can find their way into your kingdom of light. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh, we just Get beside ourselves about you. And all we have this awesome privilege of taking time to give glory and honor and praise to the Most High God. Father, we thank you for each and every one. We thank you, dear God, for this day. We thank you, Father, say, we thank you, dear God, for granting and time that we come. They come not because of us, they come because of you. 
We thank you for the gifts and the talents that you give them, dear God. And they come and they display to you, dear God. So we pray your hand and blessing be upon them. There's a whole lot of young people out there, not living right, but these choose to come here and serve you. Oh my. So may God we commit the rest of this service to you. That they got in all things, Father God. You will be honored, you will be exalted, you will be glorified, you will be magnified, oh God. Because it's all about you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And at this time we receive our Brother, Brother George, um, Brother, Rath Brother George, Brother Rathbun is going to take the offering.
God called the light day. Out of the darkness he called light. And there was evening and there was morning <clears throat> the first day. And God said that there be a vault between the waters to separate waters, water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear and it was so. God called the dry ground the land and the, and the gathered waters he called seas and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to, to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, and it was so. <clears throat> God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water team with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. And there was one. And fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds. The livestock, the, the, cre the, tre the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. <clears throat> and it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds, and God saw that it was so. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule or have dominion over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock, all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God, wow, the first thing that God did for man and his wife, he blessed them, and said to them, be fruitful, and increasing on the fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food and to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green, green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw all that he made, and it was very good. 
and it was evening and it was morning the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in the, all their vast array. And I go back to verse 27 that says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What's the first thing God did? God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves up and down. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue and whosoever loves it will eat its fruit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you said that God and your church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. So Lord, we're here through your Holy Spirit this morning to examine the word of truth and to look at it and to see if some of the things, some of the practices and the customs that we adopt to see if it lines up with your word. So Lord, we pray that you give us open hearts, dear God, to be receptive to what you would speak to us because it is the kind intention of your will that you desire to bless your people. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One of the things I want to stress as we begin. Marriage between a man and a woman is a covenant. When God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, that was a covenant he made concerning man. But I'd like to draw your attention to some practices that we have developed. I, Brother X, take you, Sister Y, to be my wedding wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part according to God's holy ordinance, and there too I pledge you my faith. We just read that when God created man and his wife, he blessed them. I, Sister X, take you, Brother Y, to be my wedded husband, to have him to hold from this day forward for better or for worse. Remember now, the Bible says there's a life in the power of the tongue. And whosoever loves it when it is true. For rich and poor in sickness and in health, what? To love and to cherish, to let us do part according to God's holy ordinance, and there to I pledge you my so what, what, what we're doing, as honorable as we intended to be, we're confessing something. When God said that he blessed the man, he blessed his woman, and blessed the woman, he blessed them so that they prosper in all states, in every single aspect of their life, they'll prosper. Sickness is not a blessing. Sickness is a curse. So say here if you say, I so and so take you for better for worse, for rich or for poor. Poverty is a curse. And you wonder why sometimes we end up living from picture to picture. 
It's not the will of God. In sickness and in health, sickness is a curse. Sickness came into the world because of sin. Poverty came into the world because of sin. And Satan heard you say it. And Satan so don't know what, what kind of generational curses in your family. And so we allow ourselves to be saddled with burdens that don't belong to us. Because I can't find it in the Bible that God says be fruitful and increase in number. He didn't say for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health. He never said it. And one of the things that Christendom does, Christendom attributes things to God that he didn't say. See, the idea is to be honorable. To be honorable in the person that you marry. But be careful what we declare on the people that we marry. Sometimes, People take a mink and they sink for a long time. Think about what you say. Say you heard you say it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And say they'll give you what you say. God says, 
Never again will I curse the ground. Remember this. Never again I will cross, curse the ground because of humans. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Seed time and harvest. What did Paul say? Paul says, when a man sows sparingly, he'll reap sparingly. When a man sows abundantly, he'll reap abundantly. And the Bible says, what Isaac, he says, Isaac sowed in the land. Why? Isaac was a covenant man. I believe that when, when Rebecca was on her way to join Isaac and he was in the field and he was either praying or meditating, I believe he was, if he was meditating, he was meditating on the covenant that God made with his daddy and the promises that God made with his daddy. What did he say? What, did, what God said to Abraham? God says, in blessing I will bless you. Those who bless you, I'll bless them. Those who curse you, I'll curse them. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Where did, where did, where did Abraham's servant get, get resources to go and purchase a bride for his, for his father's son? Because he's a covenant man and God blessed him because he's in covenant relationship with God. We are a covenant people. Amen. And it behoves us to understand the blessings of the covenant, blessings of the marriage covenant, it, it, it behoves us to understand it. Psalm 25 verse 14 says, To those who fear him, he reveals the secrets of his covenant. In other words, when you make when you make a covenant and you speak truth before God, God honors the truth that we speak to Him. And what does He say? To those who fear Him, He reveals the secrets of His covenant. In other words, God's desire is for all of us, as His beloved children, to live successful lives and prosper on the face of the earth. What is the will of God for every Christian marriage? God's will for every Christian marriage is that husband and wife know how to, how to sow and reap so that he can bless them financially, so that they don't have to be living from paycheck to paycheck, paycheck so they don't have to live that way. So they don't have to live in some run-down tenement building, but they can afford to buy a decent house for their families and raise their kids in a decent home, send their kids to decent schools and take care of their kids and take care of their wealth and prepare them for adulthood so when they go out into the world that they can be successful as well. God not only wants to bless a man and his wife, but also to bless his offspring. The scripture says, I pray that in all respects that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Hmm? It's not God's intention for us to be sick. Let me see what Exodus chapter 12, what does Exodus chapter 12 say? This is when God had come to the rescue of the children of Israel. What it talks about, it says, if you will be obedient to me, it says, I will put none of the diseases that I put on each of on you. Why is that? Because he revealed himself to the children of Israel, our covenant people, as Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. 
He says, I am the God who heals. So in other words, whatever sickness, disease, or infirmities that we have, God intends for us to be healed. I remember when, my, when I had my first daughter. You know how the kids gotta watch them because they get into mischief. And I remember my, my, my oldest daughter, she chewed on some soap. And I seen this froth come out of her mouth. <laughs> I said, oh, I, got, I got sick myself. I was beside myself, my daughter's sick. I, I couldn't handle it. What's my point? I mean, I'm, I'm an earthly father. I have a serious concern about my child. What do you think about your heavenly father? What does he think about you? What makes us think when we're sick, he's not seriously concerned. And he's given us everything that he says. He's given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness to his son. That means good health too. God wants us to be in good health. What did Caleb say at 85 years old? Caleb at 85 years old said, I have the strength of a 40 year old man. Why was that? Because he said, I serve the Lord fully. In other words, Caleb served God with his whole heart, his whole soul, his whole mind, and all of his strength, it was devoted and dedicated to serving God. And said, so because I had that kind of relationship with God, at 85 years old, I had the strength of a 40-year-old man, and at 85 years old, I can still go and take a city. Follow those principles because from the time he created a man and his wife, he blessed it. Because God wants us to abound in his blessings. He's given us principles that govern how we should live so that we don't have to be living in a poor mouth. When, when David had a desire to build the temple, the first temple, God gave him every single thing that he needed to build the temple. And someone said in a commentary that with all the resources that God gave to David to build the temple, it said that it was equal to the natural debt of England and France combined, which was over $2 billion at the time. One temple that was one of the wonders of the world. As a church, we should be stronger to pay our bills. We shouldn't be doing that. If we're doing that, we're doing that because there's something that God is communicating to us that he's displeased with and he can't show us with the blessing that he desires to do so. God loves his people. For better or for worse, I know people who, whose mates sick for a long time. It's not the will of God. Yes, we endure.
endure hardships as good soldiers. Yes, we like you. You're going to be tried and tested. Yes, we're going to do that. But you know, even though uh, Job was struck with boils, at the end of his days, Job was blessed with twice as much as he had before God put him through the test. Hmm? What, but, but look at what Job was confessing. Look at what Job was confessing. What he said, though he slay me yet, but I trust him. He said, when, I, when he has tried me, I shall come forth like gold. Look what he was confessing. Did he confess anything negative? No, because his confidence was in God. He had a relationship with God and he understood his relationship with God and he functioned according to him. And Satan could not defeat him and put him in the grave because the man knew his place with God. Though I'm going through all this my friends came and my friends are telling me it must be something that I did. Why I'm going through this. Uh, uh, his, his body was full of boys. It had, his head was swollen. But he says, when he has tried me, before that his wife said, Job, why did you curse God and die? And Job said to his wife, you speak as one of the foolish men. Shall I expect good from God and not evil? Job had an unshakable confidence in God. What did he say about the word of God? He says, I treasure your word, Lord, more than my necessary food. In other words, what did he do every day? He spent time in prayer, interceding on behalf of his children, but he also spent time in the word of God. We should look at less TV and more time in the word of God. We got to know this word. We got to know this word for better. We got to know the word. The Bible says that we need to meditate upon the word day and night. And it says if we meditate on the word of God day and night, it says then we shall have good success. What he said to us, uh, uh, Joshua, have I not commanded you? And he talked to Joshua about meditating on the word. And when Joshua did that, Joshua was one of the most successful leaders that Israel had in his history. Have I not commanded you to be strong and be of a good courage? Deuteronomy chapter 28. One of the things that we, God is wanting us to, to know that as his beloved children, we are blessed with every single spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. What did he say to the sons of Israel? If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the cows of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you and defeat you, they will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. The intentions of Black Lives Matter are good, but they will a 
achieve so much more if they spend time being obedient to the word of God. So you don't have to worry about, you know, police brutalizing you. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about activism. Just do what the word of God says. And guess what? God know how to take care of us. Hmm? We don't have to worry about people who don't like us because we're black. There's a, some, some county in Georgia that, that the, the rich whites want to succeed because they just want to be by themselves. They don't want to be with the black folk. Some people do some people do sleep over. I don't do sleep over people. Hmm? I don't do sleep over people. Because guess what? Who's my confidence? You don't have to like me. I prosper whether you like me or not. Hmm? Whether you scheme or whatever you do to keep me from prospering, if God says I'm going to prosper, if I'm, if I'm obedient to the word of God, God will take care of me. Don't have to worry about anybody. Don't have to worry about him. another human being. No. We get all bent out of shape of, too, of people too much and not express our confidence in God. Hmm? So he says, The Lord will establish you as his holy people as he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to Him, then all the peoples on earth, oh, oh, all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Oh, that's why He, that's why He, that's why, they, that's why they're called with this like they are because they serve God. Who gets the glory? He says what? He says, on all of, and then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. Hmm. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground. God will bless you on your job. God will get you promotions that you end up making more money than a lot of those people who are there before you. I remember one time I was the last man that got my job and they used to say, Sam, how come you're the last man that got here and you uh, you you getting all the overtime and we here and we, 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 we can't get the overtime you get. Why? Because I have faith on the God. The Lord will have, and says, the Lord will have blessed you with abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his body, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will not borrow from none. Hmm? So in other words, you live in debt free. And in this country that we live in, somebody's always trying to get you in debt. Hmm? I just got to pay for my car. Now they want to offer me some deal where they're going to give me uh, uh, $500 or something towards a new car just to get you back in debt. Hmm? But what God said here, when you obey my commands, I'll bless you so you can live debt free. Hmm? You live debt free and you can invest your money and get a good yield on your money when you invest in sowing and reaping. Folks, this thing is it's dynamite. And it says, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his body, to send rain on your land and sea and to bless all the work of your hands 
You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. See, we have become a designation of, you know, we, when, we, when we had a big financial problem back when President Obama was president, we had to borrow money from China to pay off our debt. So we go into them and it is said that the Chinese, they laugh and they mock us. Because we're not what we present to the world. We are not, we are not as financially uh, prosperous as we put, as we declare to the world. They're not. The same people that we used to call the bamboo curtain, and they used to call us a paper tiger, now they're laughing at us because we've become a dead nation. Not only China, we know my own money, but we owe Russian money, we owe uh, Great Britain money, we owe equal Bermuda money, we owe money to a whole lot of different countries. Why? Because we turn our backs on the God who blessed us. But let me get back to this. Marriage is the most Bless covenant after the covenant that we make with Christ. There's no covenant like it. When a husband and wife understands how to walk in obedience to the word of God, God can bless them in ways that they cannot even begin to think or imagine. Sometimes I like to tell people, when you come to me to get married, I don't want you to tell me about better for better for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health. No, I don't want you to tell me that. I got I did the ceremony for a couple that I knew for a long time. And now he's doing good. She doing really good. She makes big money to do the speeches. Now they move to wherever they live, and now they live up in Boca on a fancy place. Why is that? Because they established the right covenant with God so that God can bless them. Everything that we need to live a successful life on planet Earth. Jehovah God has given it to us in His Word. I shared this with one of my family members, and uh, they were all bent out of shape. I said, No, it has to be, it has to be this way. <laughs> And I was upstairs and I read a talk about yeah, yeah, that's sad, you know, but I don't know what's the matter with it. Why? Because you see, we're so indoctrinated into old stuff. Hmm? It sounds good, it sounds wonderful, but it ain't biblical. And God is awakening us today to say, Oh. You don't know how much I want to bless you. What did he say about Boaz? He said Boaz was a man that was blessed with great wealth. You know when God allowed Ruth to show up in his life, Boaz was a wealthy man. So Boaz could take care of his wife. Hmm? That's how the order is supposed to be. We just lost track of it. God's order for marriage. Every Christian home that applies the word of God will be abundantly blessed in every single way. And guess what, folks? 
we'll be so blessed that we can be a blessing to others. There's a whole lot of people out there in need. And there's a whole lot of people out there that need someone to come alongside of them and be a blessing to them. And that's what the will of God is for all of the couples in his house. That we can walk, well I'm not a couple, I'm sorry, but they can walk in such a way that God can make them so prosperous that they can be blessings to other people as well. Amen? Amen. Let us stand and be dismissed. Brother George, I'd like to ask you to close in prayer for us today.